Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and we're going to be taking a look at making a whip camera transition. Now, if you want to do this as clean as possible, I recommend that on the day you go ahead and you plan to put this into your shot. And by that I mean make sure that you transition out and into a scene by actually moving the camera around a center axis of some kind. Um, kind of like in the first example here, where you don't have to do much to make it work. So here it is hard cut together, and then with a linear wipe in between it, and then one where we tweak the opacity, and it really flows together quite nicely. But then there is also a chance that you might not have thought to do that on the day, or whoever was controlling the camera just didn't want to do it that day, or you didn't pay them enough and they stormed off angrily, and you know what, that's, you know, it happens. So you have to make it up in post. So in order to do that, you can go from having a hard wipe between them, Add a little bit of space to give you more time, start to blend it with a ramp, and then after that you have awesomeness with more blending. So let's get into how to do that. So if on scene you happen to have someone with the wherewithal to go ahead and pre-plan this shot into things, we'll do that version first. So we go here, let's just import our uh, footages, and the first thing to do, well I guess the first thing to do is make a composition. Uh, we just drag one of these onto the comp here, and we'll just clean up the windows here. Okay, so you want to find a part that has, you know, what you would consider to be the best uh, whip in that you can get. Uh, that's okay. Let's scrub through and try to find a better one, maybe. And this one looks to be the longest. So when you do the camera move on scene, it's best to have a nice 180 degree arc, which will help you get up to speed before you start slowing down. We want to take this as soon as it starts getting up to speed. That looks about right. Uh, hold down Alt and hit the open square bracket there to mark the set the start of the layer and because uh, we'll need that as a reference later and let's pull up the first one drag that in and so this one here is going from left to right so we want one here that is also going uh, let's see here there we go okay so then we want to find on this one here where it is, yeah, around there is about it. Let's set the end of that one. Now, like we showed, you know, when they're just stuck together, click, click, like that, looks kind of stupid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, you know, it's on, two, three, four, five. We'll put in a bit of overlap between the two of them. And let's just, you know, move in here a little bit so we can just look at these frames because they're the only ones we're really interested in. And what I did was I used a linear linear wipe and uh, you know here on frame the first its completion is uh, none and then towards the end its completion is all the way across. So kinda like that. Now, you'll notice in here what's kind of important is that it appears as if this line, the one here that defines the boundary, is kind of like stuck in this scene. So it's important to rotate it about the same speed, and uh, yeah, I suppose it's really one of the only important things, and to make sure that this wipe comes across at the same speed. So, uh, inside the linear wipe, the other thing to do here is to really crank this feather. Uh, you know, uh, 1080 ought to do it. So that the two kind of blend together a little bit like that. Whoop. That's looking pretty good. Now it looks like even the, the motion where you swing across and up in a little bit, if you can match that as best you can with your hands at the time, then that'll really save you in post because, you know, we're almost done. The only thing left to do is to grab this thing here, pull it to pull up its uh, opacity, and because uh, when it goes here, click, 
kind of comes on in this brightness. Uh, we don't really care too much for that. So opacity down to zero here. And yeah, we want it at 100 at least there. Maybe. Yeah. There you go. And I think that's pretty much it for the simple version. Um, but things get a little bit more complicated if when you're on set that day, no one thinks to capture this motion, or no one really thinks it's important until they're in post, and then they think, you know what would be cool? I wish we had that transition. It's too bad we didn't do it while we were there. Hey, effects guy, why don't you just make it? So that's what we'll do next. Let's just say, you know, for the sake of argument, that this was all we had right here. That's it. And then for this one here, Let's say this one only started here. So you're kind of stuck when you've got, you know, a jump cut between the two of them, and you want to turn that into something, something more worthwhile. Um, so let's get it going. Uh, first thing you're gonna need is a new null object that we're gonna actually use to control this motion between the two spots. So step one is to grab, take your original here, and. Uh, we're going to parent that one to the null object, and the null object, we're going to change its position, right here, and two, three, four, five. Again, we're going to only do this over five frames, so, you know, let's just move this so we have that five frame overlap, poke its eye out. Now, moving this is parented to the null, and the null, we move its position over, so we want it here, and then it gone and bring this one here up hey now it's in the right spot parent it to the null and we've got this going on now as we saw in the original examples these are actually too close together because you know we've already arrived here and it's not it's not like we're moving anywhere in this scene or in this scene so we kind of have to fake it a little bit so what we'll be doing is just space this out you know to like half of a frame apart and then you know you'll have to move your null object obviously over a bit to uh, make up for that but uh, you know there it is just trying to make sure that's perfect all right close enough so now we've got you know these two things moving but now we have a hole in the middle so that's not good and we'll need to fill that up with something uh, let's see this. Oh, let's space these out by this one more keyframe. So we have an exact middle. So there. Okay. So the first thing to do is make a new solid. And, uh, yeah, that's good enough. And this will be going in the middle behind everybody. And let's grab a little ramp going on. Doesn't have to be perfect, because, you know, once we get it, once we get it going fast, it's really going to go. So... It's a black solid, put a ramp on it, uh, let's move one part of the ramp will start there, another part of the ramp will start over there, and we want to set the colors of the ramp to a dominant color in the scene over here, so maybe something like that, maybe even move this a little bit closer to there, and for this other guy, definitely one of these oranges is definitely closer. Maybe move it a bit over. So we've got kind of a good thing in the background. Uh, go ahead and parent that to the null object too, so that it's moving. Uh, the other thing to do is to give these both uh, motion blur and set the motion blur on there. Boom! So things are looking a little bit better already. Um, one other thing to do here when you put on motion blur, go to the composition settings, go into the advanced. And this shutter angle here is going to determine how much of a motion blur we're looking at. Uh, I think by default it comes in at like a buck eighty, and uh, as you can see, all these little trails are getting shorter. But for our purposes, we kind of want that to be larger because we want to try to blur and obscure our problem as much as we can. So the next thing to do is actually to go here to this frame before anything starts moving. Now, we're gonna go to this, and we're going to just duplicate it, 
And what we're going to do is we're going to try to extend this little part here of the scene. So first off, we're going to go layer, time, freeze frame, because we don't want it moving anywhere. And then we're going to take our, our uh, rectangular mask tool here and just draw one around the end. So that'll do. And just trim it up a little bit here, because we really only need it to fill in some of the gaps in here. And what we'll be doing with it, let's take this blur off so we can see what we're doing, is stretch, stretching it out a little bit. All right, so go scale, unlink the scale properties, and really we're gonna just be stretching it on one of them. And before you do that, make sure you move its anchor point near the center so that its scaling makes some kind of sense to us. Stretch that out a bit. Now you might want to also, while you're at it, and, and uh, feather that mask on both ends. Uh, maybe just move the mask a little bit here. Do something like that. See so yeah, how we're kind of getting this blurriness coming across. All right, so now put this on. Hey, that's looking a little bit better, right? So, you know, maybe crank that uh, crank that feather up a little bit more, see what more you can get out of it. And, do, do, do. Just make sure that it comes on just as things start getting crazy. All right, and now we do the same thing for the other side. So, grab this, duplicate it. That's layer, time, freeze frame. All right, turn its motion blur off so we can work with it. Take the mask, just mask out this little bit at the end, right here, okay, and now we're going to be using the scale, and take your hand behind tool, move this in here so the scaling looks right, and then we only scale the one part of it, move it over, kind of MM, get that feather going up. 250 or something. Uh, let's see. Shift the mask over a little bit so it's not so pronounced. And it's looking a bit better. Move that whole unit over a bit so we can get out of it. And do 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 do. That's quite enough out of it. Trim it up so it's not weird. Now in the middle we still have a bit of a blending issue going on here and you know really you're going to want to take the opacity down of these two things that we've used to cover up stuff with. Um, so just bear in mind that you you know they're not for keeping. You're just going to be taking the two of them, taking their opacity down a little bit, you know, enough that it's not strange. And then when you run it through, kind of just blurs by, you know. And what you can do is kind of offset things a little bit if you so desire. You can warp them, distort them. And, you know, the idea is just to try to smooth out your transition problem um, because you know you can try to deny it, but you do have a transition problem at this stage when someone comes to you and says, "You know what? I think I think we want to." Uh, we want to make up a transition that's uh, tough to do in post. Uh, maybe even darken this thing in the background here a little bit, just to try to make sure the colors come together a little bit better. And that's about it. So if someone has come to you and they want one of these transitions and they didn't think about doing it on set at the time, now you have the tools to do it. Just remember to try to use parts of the start and end to blend it together and make up that gap in the middle so that you're able to fake like it was being moved around and get that, that blurriness about the universe around it as you, you know, spin the camera around, I suppose. And uh, it's really all about blending. So this has been Evan Abrams. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at EC Abrams. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you want to learn more. I've got a couple other things about custom transitions inside of After Effects you might want to check out if you're looking to expand uh, on some of the tools in your uh, 
tools in your toolbox there. Um, this one, you know, you can really uh, go between scenes quite easily, like the kitchen to the office, and you know, there are some presets that can do this for you, but if you really want that fine control, you're really going to want to go in there and do it for yourself so you can probably get this to look quite a bit nicer than you would. But bottom line is, hopefully you work with people who plan ahead uh, and, you know, for your own projects, try to plan ahead as well. If you know this is the sort of thing you want to incorporate, do it on set. And as you can see, the difference was, you know, the one looked a lot better and took a lot less time. So just remember that, that planning, planning ahead will save you a lot of time and headache and generally make things look better. Um, in true, you know, true in After Effects, as it is in life, that if you're able to make good plans and stick to them without, you know, someone T-boning you in your car and then you have to get a Yaris and then people make fun of your Yaris, but, you know, it's no big deal. I used to drive a Toyota Echo, so it's not like I'm really losing anything. But uh, anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And uh, yeah, have a nice day. Check out the rest of them. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And I'll try to help you out as best I can. Thanks, and have a good day.